Good morning, everyone. It is 10.01, May 3rd, 2018. My name is Bobby Davidson, and I'm going to begin the Sponsor Application Renewal and PLE Tutorial Webinar. Today's webinar will be recorded and posted later on our YouTube and SlideShare accounts. And it does fall under Professional Standards Learning Codes, 3000 for Administration, and 3200 for Program Management. If you do have questions, please utilize the question section in your user guide here, and we will answer the questions at the end. So the agenda for today's webinar, we will be going over the NSLP and RCCI application checklist. We will go through each form as listed on the checklist. And then we will go over how to complete the online portion in CNP. I will then give you a timeline of due dates for the application. And then the second half of this webinar will be the paid lunch equity tool tutorial. And those of you who are attending from RCCIs, this is not mandatory, so you may exit if you do not wish to view this section of the webinar. And then the last section, we will have a question and answer section. So if you want to pull out your the applicable checklist, so those who are NSLP or RCCIs, they are handouts in the webinar here. And you can see number one for both NSLP and RCCI is the checklist itself. So we will be looking for that signed checklist submitted with your paper documents. You can find this checklist also on CNP under the sponsor application and the form download section. And you'll notice the numbers listed on the checklist are going to match what is listed in CNP. So you have a direct reference to those forms. Number two on the checklist for both NSLP and RCCIs is the permanent agreement. Now this form does cause some confusion and I'm just gonna walk you through the necessary components of this. So on page one, you are going to fill out your name and address of the sponsor, the federal ID and your DUNS number. Then you're gonna skip all the way to page 10 and you will be presented with this chart and it should look familiar to most of you. On the first row, you're gonna check any program that's applicable to your sites. So if you're participating in National School Lunch, School Breakfast, After School Snack, Special Milk, or Seamless Summer, you have the option to check those boxes here. In the second row, it's asking about commodities, and the only box that should be checked if you wish to receive commodities is the first box, 10.555 USDA Foods, the National School Lunch Program. Now the last section on page 10 of the permanent agreement, you have the choice to choose what type of institution you are and then you, it must be signed by the designated official in blue. So number three for both RCCIs and NSLP is the policy amendment. Now this is a new form created by NDA and we were looking to ease the burden of collecting so many documents to send in with your application and ease our burden of going through all these documents. So with this amendment, you're going to put a check next to all of the forms or policies that have remained the same from last year. So this could be your policy statement, meal charge policy, special diet policy, wellness policy, and your food safety manual. So you'll put a check next to all applicable forms and you're gonna, gonna be signed by the designated official in blue. Now, if there have been changes made to these policies, then you're gonna send in that revised document along with your other renewal application documents. Now here's where the NSLP and RCCI checklists differ. So for NSLP, the fourth thing that's asked from you is gonna be your school calendar. So you're gonna send that in. We are gonna ask for menus. We're looking for a minimum of two weeks of menus for each applicable program. So that's breakfast, lunch, and snack. 
Then you must send in the ending fund balance. You may send in the 1718. If that has not been done yet, you're going to send your most recent. So we're going to look for that 1617. Then we're going to look for the pay lunch equity tool, which I explained we're going to go over later in this webinar. And it must be sent in Excel form. You're going to send your free and reduced lunch application. Now this um, prototype from USDA has not changed from last year, so you can still use that same prototype, just update the dates. And we are requesting your sample media release. Now USDA has not released the income eligibility chart to include in the sample media release. So because we are still waiting on this, you may send the remainder of your documents in, and we are aware that we are all waiting for this income eligibility chart. And then the annual USDA storage facility form. This is the form that monitors where you store those USDA foods. So we are not looking for a form for each of your sites, just for the main site, sites that house those USDA foods. You also send in your wellness policy contact form and the special provision policy amendment if you're participating in those special provisions. Now for the RCCI checklist, your fourth thing that is asked is the wellness policy contact form. You also send in an ending fund balance, and this may be from the current school year or most recent. We are also looking for the ending year balance report, and that's that Excel form that is posted in CNP. We will need to see your menus, and again, a minimum of two weeks for each applicable program, breakfast, lunch, and snack and that annual USDA food storage facility form. So now we're going to move into the online section of your application. And there's three main components when filling out your online application. The first, you're going to fill out that racial and ethnic site reviews, health inspections, and civil rights report. Now because this is on the 17-18 school year, it's going to be completed in your 1718 application. You also submit your 1819 sponsor application and your 1819 site applications. Now here is just um, some clips of that racial, ethnic, site reviews, and civil rights report. And you can see this should look familiar to most of you. You're going to fill out all that information here. If you do complete it in the 18-19 school year, it will result in an error because you have no approved sites yet. Now for the sponsor application, you're going to log into CNP. You're going to choose the sponsor application on that green sidebar in CNP. You're going to toggle to the 18-19 school year. Click New Application, choose your sponsor name, and click Add New. And here's where you'll modify any of that information that applies to, your, to you as a sponsor. And after you've completed that, you may complete your site information. So once you click on Sponsor Application, you'll be, be presented with this home page here and you will click um, the Go button next to Site Information. Then you will click Add Another Site, and all last year's site applications will populate through. So you will be able to choose each site, modify them, and submit. So the last portion of the application is for those utilizing a food service management company or utilizing a vended meal contract. And these are very similar. You're going to answer the first question underneath those sections, with at, which asks you if you've already submitted your contracts for approval to NDA. If you answer yes, then you're done. You don't have to submit anything else. If you answer no, then you must submit those contracts, either initial or renewal, to NDA for approval with your application documents. For the food service management companies, you will also submit a food service management contract monitoring form. And then for both the FSMCs and vended meals, 
you're going to submit the Food Service Management Company contract fact sheet in your sponsor application under the 2018-19 school year. So here is a timeline. We are asking that all RCCIs submit their applications by May 15th. And then for all school district, charter schools, and special milk, your applications are due June 1st. And so a few reminders for this. We ask that you please submit a complete application. And what we're meaning by this is that your online portion is complete and all paper documents are complete and sent in one package to myself. They could either be sent to my email address or Sparks office. And again, if you have questions, please ask. We are more than willing to help. We want you to submit your application successfully and we will help you with any problems that you incur. And lastly, please sign in blue. We cannot tell you how many applications have been held up because the signatures are not in blue. So when in doubt, sign in blue. So we're going to transition into our second part of our webinar today, which is the Paid Lunch Equity Tool Tutorial. Now you may ask, what is PLE? And this is a tool developed by USDA to ensure that sponsors' paid lunch prices meet equity. So they want to make sure that you're charging enough for those paid lunches. And what is the paid lunch equity for 2018-19? It is set at $2.92, and that's a weighted average price. Now, before you get discouraged looking at this number, USDA does authorize a 10 cent cap on increasing lunch prices. So this allows you to increase your weighted average price by 10 cents to gradually meet equity. So they're not expecting you to jump in and raise your prices a whole lot to meet this 292. They want to work with you to gradually meet equity. Now who has to complete the PLE? So it's all national school lunch sponsors in their second year of operation and it's also sponsors who collect money for paid lunches. So if you're operating a district-wide CEP, you are exempt from filling out this tool. I know there are many options you have when filling out the PLE tool and I am going to walk you through a live version with examples of what exactly that you have to fill out. Give me a moment while I pull up the tool here. So when you open up the PLE tool, you will be presented with this Excel spreadsheet. And by the looks of it, it's very overwhelming. There are many tabs, but I'm here to tell you, you do not have to fill them all out. It's much more manageable than it looks. So the first thing you're going to open, it's the PLE guidance, and this gives you all the guidance that is also in those USDA memos that we sent out about the PLE tool, and those are included as handouts as well as a webinar in this webinar if you're interested in looking them over. The second tab here is the instructions page, and here in the SFA name, if you type your name here, this will populate through the rest of the tabs so you don't have to continually enter your sponsor name. Now the first tab, you're, after the instructions page, you're gonna go to the unrounded requirement finder. And you're going to use um, your information from last year's PLE tool, and we want that 2017-18 unrounded, unrounded price that was set for you in last year's tool. And if you don't know this price, you can always contact me. I have all your PLE tools on file, and we can walk you through how to find out that information. So for example purposes, I'm just going to use the 286. Give me just a moment here, folks. So 
So as you can see, I've entered 286 here. This was last year's pay, pay lunch equity price set by USDA. And it automatically rounds up to that 292, which is set for this year. And this is going to populate through the rest of your tabs as a reminder of the price requirement that you're aiming to achieve. So now we're going to scroll to the SY1819 price calculator. And you're going to use your information from your October 2017 claim. You can see the 292 has been populated through and it does round down to the nearest five cents. So you're aiming for that 290 average weighted price. So for those of you who are meeting equity, I will give you an example. We're going to say we serve 10 lunches. in October and we had a price of 450. As you can see here our weighted average price for the 18 or 1718 school year was 450. No price increase is necessary. You are above equity and you may scroll to the report tab, which we will go over in a second. For those of you at not at equity, we'll give you another example here. So our we're going to say our elementary school prices were set at 275. And then our secondary lunches we sold at 285 for this year. Now you can see here that our weighted average price was 282. We are required to increase our weighted average price by 8 cents to meet that 290 requirement. So if you decide that this is a reasonable amount, you want to raise prices, then you're going to go to step three, and we are going to play with our lunch prices to get to that 290 level. So you're gonna enter your number of lunches that you put for October, and we're going to increase our elementary school lunches to 285, and keep our secondary prices the same. And although you've increased one price by 10 cents, you can see that it did not affect your weighted average price as much because you want to increase the weighted average price by 10 cents, not just the individual price. So it's in your best interest to raise the prices of what you sell more of. So if you have more secondary lunches, the 25, that's gonna affect your average price greater. So if we kept our elementary the same, we're going to increase our secondary to $3. You can see that our weighted average price went up to 293 which is above our required price increase, and that's going to carry over to next year, and you won't have to raise as much. And if you want to exceed that, you are more than welcome. If we raise both prices, you can see that weighted average price is $3, and this is going to lessen the burden of having to increase your prices every year, because this will carry forward to the next year. Now, if you decide that Raising prices is not the option for you. You're going to go to the SY1819 non-federal calculator. And you can see here it's populated through that your required price or your, your price requirement. You're going to put your current average price, which if you remember from our price calculator was 282. Then it's going to ask you for the annual number of paid lunches for 2016-17. And we're going to say we served 1,000 lunches. Now you can see this calculates that you need to transfer $80 of non-federal funds into your nonprofit school food service account. Now, if you've already contributed non-federal funds from 2011 to 2018, you could enter that here. And if it exceeds the amount of non-federal sources that you're required to transfer in, then you will not have to contribute any more funds. 
So say we already transferred $1,000 into our nonprofit school food service account, you can see that your requirement is changed to zero because you already exceeded that limit. Now, if we decide this $80 is too much to transfer into our nonprofit school food service alone, you may want to go to the split calculator, and this allows you to raise your average prices sum and then contribute the rest in non-federal funds. So it's going to ask you for that same information for how many lunches you served in October. You see we have that 282 again. And like the first example, if we just increased the one elementary school lunch, we raised our price to 285, our weighted average price. It will then ask you how many lunches, like on the non-federal calculator that you served. And you could see that it's telling you now that you only have to contribute $50 in non-federal funds because you were able to raise your prices some and you're going to contribute the rest in non-federal funds. And again, if you exceeded this amount of transfers of non-federal funds into your nonprofit school food service account, it will change to zero and you will not have to add any additional funds. So now once you've decided what route that you're going to take, you're going to go to the SY 2018-19 report. And this is just summarizing what you chose to do with your paid lunch prices. So, if you were decided to increase, you're going to choose that, contribute non-federal sources, both, or your add above equity. There's also an option for exemption granted, which I will talk to you in a little bit. But once you choose what you decided to do, you're going to answer, you're going to enter the amount that you contributed of non-federal sources. You're going to put where the sources were from. And if you do decide to go this non-federal source route or the split route, we will ask for backup documentation that this you have contributed the adequate amount of non-federal funds to your nonprofit school food service account. So now that you've completed your PLE tool, Again, we're just going to recap those four options that you have. So if you're not at equity, you can increase your paid lunch prices to the required amount. You can contribute non-federal funds to the nonprofit school food service account. We will ask for backup documentation if you decide to do this. You can split by increasing your paid lunch prices some and contributing the remainder in non-federal funds. Again, we will ask for backup documentation of these non-federal funds. And then there is, oops, sorry, here, there is an exemption that we do allow from raising lunch prices. And to be allowed to request this, you must have a positive balance in your nonprofit school food service account as of January 31st, 2018. So as of January 31st of this year. So you will fill out the tool instead of going through the different tabs of what route you want to take to meet equity. You're going to go to the Report tab and choose Exemption Granted. You will also submit a formal letter requesting an exemption to, N or to NDA with your renewal documents. And you must provide supporting documentation that you did have a positive balance as of January 31, 2018.